uh, joining tonight's webinar hosted by the SDPA Sports Psychology Committee. My name is Michael Saleh, and I co-chair the committee with Dr. Kimberly Wagner. And we have the pleasure of hosting Sean Tui and Catherine Jacoba, who will be presenting about their company, The Intellectual Athlete, and its school-based curriculum called Playbuilt Resilience. Um, that is currently being tested in various settings, including schools and on sports teams across San Diego. So just in a nutshell, the intellectual athlete fuses sport, play, and elite athlete mental skills to help youth build resilience in multiple areas of life. So our presenters are Sean. Um, Sean is the founder and director and a former college basketball player who has dedicated the past 20 years to discovering the highest and best use of play. He is also joined by Catherine, who is an Oxford graduate and licensed family medicine physician in the UK, uh, who joined Intellectual Athlete about one year ago and oversees the monitoring uh, and evaluation of their model. So Dr. Wagner and I believe that their organization puts into practice our committee's mission which is to educate our community about traditional and creative ways that experts in health and sport are improving the mental and physical well-being of athletes of all skill levels. So during the presentation, please type any questions that you have into the chat box, uh, and Dr. Wagner will pose those questions uh, to our presenters at the end. Um, I've personally been looking forward to hosting this presentation uh, with Sean and Catherine. Uh, I very much appreciate them both being here, and I'm confident that uh, you all will appreciate the work that they're doing as well. Um, and on that note, I will turn it over uh, to our presenters. Thank you, Michael. We are uh, very excited to present to the San Diego Psychological Association. Um, I, I thought, you know, Everyone has an angle and I wanted out of the gates to make our intentions very clear. We want to engage the association's members. Um, we are a growing scrappy startup who uh, has a really strong idea and we're looking to grow and we need help. And so uh, we'll talk about all these different needs uh, later on in this in this presentation, but I just think it's good to to let you know that, that, that we have an ask here tonight. And our ask is we want um, referrals for our drop and play, which is a neighborhood-based uh, play framework, which we'll explain. We are gearing up towards an RCT and anyone on here who's had any experience uh, working on an RCT, a random control trial, we would like to engage you and, 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 and bring you onto this team because they're very complex and we know this and anyone who has experience would be very helpful. We are establishing a clinical advisory board um, to uh, help us uh, strategically, both on the business side and as well as uh, the, the, you know, the psychological side. And then um, we have a we are a very attractive side hustle for grad students looking for uh, practicum, hour, practicum hours. And I was just talking to Michael before this started. If there are ways that we could connect our graduate students to uh, potential supervision opportunities. Uh, we would like to uh, explore that. So Catherine put in the chat a Google uh, link to a, a sign up. If any of these uh, categories are interesting to you, please sign up and we will, we will follow back up uh, tomorrow or the next day. And we, we look forward to potentially meeting you all in person. And, um, you know, we're excited about this, 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 this business. And um, this is a very uh, great opportunity for us tonight to tell you about it. So Play-based resilience training. We aspire to create an accessible and acceptable preventative therapeutic model, equipping young people with foundational skill sets to strengthen resilience before depression and other anxiety issues set in. We are therapeutic, not therapy. We are physiological, not clinical. And we call ourselves performance enhancement through play with mental health effects. Our goal is to create a network of paraprofessionals to fill the gap between the lack of qualified, able clinicians and the amount of kids who are out there needing help. A third of America is a mental health desert. 
Um, the Secretary of Education said 80% of kids are dealing with mental health issues right now. There's simply not enough of you. So someone's going to create a framework to, to, to help kids in need. And we believe that that, that intellectual athlete um, could potentially be that. Um, so this is not fly by night. This isn't just something we, ca we conjured up because of the pandemic. I've been on a 20 year search to try to figure out how, how to grow their clinical, oh, sorry, psychological tentacles in the community using trusted messengers. In uh, early 2000s, I was living in South Africa in the highest uh, infected HIV area in the world, uh, KwaZulu Natal. And we had set up basketball uh, leagues. Our goal in going down there and around the world is use basketball as a cross community sport. We thought that we, we can you know change kids beliefs on the other if we can connect them with with whites in South Africa, blacks and whites, in Israel with Arabs and Jews, in Northern Ireland with Catholic and Protestants. Playing for Peace is blown up. Nike now sponsors it. My brother runs it. They use basketball for peace building all over the world. But in South Africa, we landed in the shitstorm of HIV and we found we had undivided attention of thousands and thousands of kids who were on the brink of becoming sexually active. No one wanted to go in the clinics because they were, if you went in the clinics, people would assume you had it. We figured we could grow clinical knowledge through trusted coaches. So we equipped coaches to test, to counsel for testing and to manage positive and negative results. I left, I thought that was a really big idea and I wanted to see where it could play out. I then embedded with the Metropolitan Police Force in Washington DC, believing that we could use coaches as a way of helping kids who have early childhood violence, abuse, neglect. It's very difficult to grow therapy in the inner city and under-resourced areas because of transportation, uh, cost, stigma. Um, and I figured that coaches who have the, uh, these kids' attention, we could, we could equip them with the ability. But I didn't have a curriculum. So I, I got funding from the Department of Justice and we had these bells and whistles and we had nothing because we didn't know what to do with the kids. So then I embedded with Doc Wayne, which is out of uh, New, uh, Massachusetts, and they use clinicians as coaches. And I spent time studying their program. And, and a lot of programs use sport as the hook to get kids in the gym. They get kids in the gym, they roll the balls away, and they have DBT, CBT interventions, whatever they, they feel is going to help these kids. I didn't believe that that was the most effective way. I believe, and this is what I've learned in the last couple of years, is that the answer lies within sport and play. It's not layering something over, it's extracting out what sport and play inherently give us, which are accelerated heart rates, ridiculous amounts of pressure and fun, uh, timeouts, resets, transitions, where you can practice self-regulating. So that's what intellectual athlete is. It's using sport and play to manufacture moments that matter for kids so they can practice self-regulating in, in, in a framework where, where they can do this repetitively. And we, we can, we can uh, give them a chance to create real stress and then let them climb down off of that stress through breathing and give them the chance to regulate we rinse and repeat that process until breathing becomes instinctual in the face of stress. This is what intellectual athlete is becoming the best in the world at. And it's just so ironic that the, 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 the solution for what can help kids in this time, uh, one solution, it, it's been around for hundreds of years. Uh, elite athletes have been doing this for years. Breath, brain, body coherence, going green, finding that optimal flow state. My buddy's the sports psychologist, Will Lenzer, for the, for the California Angels. He doesn't talk to the players about their relationship with their wives or, or their finances. It's strictly how to get, get in that optimal flow state. And it's coming down right now. The college teams all have sports psychologists, mental performance coaches, high school elite players are, 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 are getting involved because everyone knows the game's all mental. We are jumping the line and we're trying to package this for the everyday kid who may, may or not ever become a forward or a tennis player in Wimbledon, 
but we say that every kid's an athlete and all of life is a performance. I did the box breath like three or four times before getting on this, this presentation. I mean, you can think about your day to day. How many times did you need to like be focused? That's what breathing does. It's, it, it's performance enhancement, but it also can be used when your parents are in your grill or when you get slammed on social media. But, it, you know, breathing is not the thing we teach these kids out of the gate. It's how they feel and knowing that they can use their breath as a remote control at any point to manipulate how they feel. And, and, and we, we deliver this through a fun play framework. I will get into the, 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 the nuts and bolts of our curriculum, but this is the way we're approaching the marketplace, that, that we can package what, what musicians are doing right now, what LeBron James is on commercials for, what you're seeing the, the elite performers of our society doing, it's going to sink down. We're just moving at a quicker pace, and we figured out how to do it and how to relate to these kids in a way that 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 doesn't feel feel you know forced or you know again, it's giving them play and sport, just a, you know a little bit more intentionally designed with slower slower um, long longer uh, resets and, and, and transitions. So Catherine is a, a doctor and she's going to go into what stress does to the brain. Just so, you know, not to belittle anyone on here. I'm sure you all know this, but it's, it's crucial to who we are and what we're doing. I'm sure everybody already knows this, but um, stress when it's um, unpredictable, prolonged and extreme obviously leads to all sorts of health problems. Um, it obviously, it leads to the development of anxiety, chronic anxiety and depression. Um, one of the risk factors and, um, it also affects how the brain functions in the moment in terms of how much we're able to think rationally, make, make good decisions. Um, whereas stress that's more predictable and in, in short manageable doses can actually be used to build resilience. And there's research, um, there's research out there that does show that um, controlled amounts of stress can help build resilience in, um, in adults and in youth. So um, in terms of how we approach self-regulation, um, as um, when the brain is, well, the person's experiencing a lot of stress, um, it's really hard for um, to access your cerebral cortex. So um, decisions are largely driven by the more um, primitive areas of the brain. So that's actually, um, it, it can actually sometimes be referred to as lizard brain, but essentially what that means is it's just more reactive, more aggressive, more um, more driven by the fight or flight reaction. And um, the more stress somebody experiences, the the more and more decisions become irrational, or even um, other reactions like dissociation, um, unable to fully consider the consequences of the um, of your actions. So um, breathing. Um, Research shows that it um, slow, deep breathing and intentionally slowing down your breath um, activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is um, the antidote to the um, body's fight or flight response. Um, it activates the rest and digest parts of, of the nervous system. So it, has, it signals for the body to relax. And um, anyone who's tried this can really would probably agree that you start to feel a lot better and um, the more you practice this breathing, um, the more you return to being, being able to um, perform better and um, you feel a lot better as well. So um, the breathing has a physiological effect um, and another aspect uh, intellectual athlete um, also targets is um, the cognitive processing. Um, once you've been able to calm yourself down with breathing and overridden the body's um, stress response you can also think about identifying some of those negative thoughts that are um, obviously more frequently present if you're in a um, anxious or depressed so then um, uh, we teach children how to um, identify thoughts not in a way to just simply be positive but ones where they're going through what seems like a negative filter or spit or are not um, in fact representative of the situation. So um, in a, as I'll talk about later, kids are using this in their real lives after um, a sports psychology elective with us when they're able to actually um, change some of the way, their ways of thinking based on um, the curriculum. 
of what they experience in the sports psychology elective. And, you know, back to why sport and play are so uh, useful here. Um, Bruce Duncan Perry has created the neuro sequential model for sport. He just wrote a best-selling book with Oprah. He, he just repeatedly talks about the pattern red, repetitive rhythmic behavior, which sport is, you know, that, that, that regulates the body, the, 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 the brain in ways that, that no other, you know, therapeutic interaction, you know, does as well as, you know, it integrates dosing and spacing. If you want to get good at sport, you need to practice, um, you know, and then rest and then recover. And, um, you know, he, 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 like, he, he compares it to, you know, the mother's heartbeat, like that's how we regulate. And so, um, you know, a lot of the sporting activities that we do involve, you know, dribbling, passing, fun, shooting, uh, it, it, it's, it's what the kids want to do, followed by the breath work. And then the other huge part about sport, and which is so important to the brain, is this the relationships. Um, we've been very, very effective in finding um, very talented instructors. We are not burning through college kids who are looking for exchange time for a paycheck. We are recruiting mind-body professionals, people who, uh, who, who, who wish they had been taught this earlier. And I'm one of them. I played college basketball. I was, a, I was a disaster. If I missed one shot, I'd miss the next 10 because I could not, as Catherine said, I could not get out of that negative thought, thought cycling. And I'd say the, the, the resounding uh, uh, culture of our, of our instructors is that we, we have a skill, we know a skill that the kids don't know and we wished we had learned this earlier for performance and of course now for anxiety. Um, and, and so, um, you know, and then also just, you know, the kids bonding with each other. We'll get into this later, but a big part of our program is that it's not instructor led. It's not a typical sports practice where an instructor is barking orders to kids. This more, this function, the, the instructor's a lifeguard. The kids run our practices. They decide what they want to do and when, and, and we support them, get them excited, find, you know, and, 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 and so it's child-led to its core, and I'll, I'll get more into that, but that, that is the difference between us and traditional sport model. Um, we we, we want to give the kids the autonomy to figure things out themselves, and we, 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 we provide options, and, and, you know, when a kid, we, we provide moments where they can display courage in front of their peers, which is, like, probably the best way for kids to, to, to grow, more than you know, trying to just show off for, for, for an instructor that they like. The business of IA, this is a good idea, it's timely, but at the end of the day, it's a business. And, and we, we've got to figure out how to bring it to market in a way that is, 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 is you know, attractive enough to pull kids away from what they're already doing or integrate with the, the programs that they're already doing in a way that complements the work that, 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 that's out there. So we have three silos right now schools, neighborhoods, and, and, and so we call it plays as schools, wanders as neighborhood, and trains is clubs and individuals. Schools is where we're cutting our teeth. There are advantages and disadvantages to every single silo that we're working in. Um, you know, schools are where we're, the schools generally push us into the after school space of uh, after school enrichment, which you're working with a hodgepodge of kids from different grades, different skill levels. Um, and it, it sometimes feels like babysitting. Um, and then there's a, I don't know if this is a medical word, but we call it collapse syndrome. The kids are very tired at the end of the day. Um, and the schools don't really appreciate enrichment. They just kind of, you know, see you as this vendor who's managing kids in the schoolyard. But we are in probably 20 schools. Half of those schools, we've in, infiltrated the school day. Um, we just started piloting in Washington, DC last week. We were doing the zero period before school. And we have 15 kids, we have incredible instructors. And if we can't move the needle there, then maybe this thing doesn't work because we, having the kids in the morning to self-regulate them early before the first bell, we, we, we intend to see that their entire day is gonna be um, uh, supported and, 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 and they're, gonna, they're gonna be better students as a result. Um, wanders, we do things like night hikes. We take kids on two mile long loop hikes in the dark with headlamps, knowing that this is gonna scare them. They're gonna feel real stress, but um, you know, it's a great opportunity to breathe. We, um, 
we, 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 we do Nerf gun battles. We do Lego master builds, things that we know the kids want to do. And we, you know, it's, 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 it's fun. And we, we, we make it competitive when it's necessary. And if not, the nature uh, has ways of drawing out the best of what kids have to offer. Um, trains, we help kids on an individual matter who are struggling with anxiety around certain aspects of their sport. Um, we, a kid, a mom called me and said, my son's afraid of the batter's box, which is ironic because he's a pitcher. Well, we work with a, you know, a sports psychologist, usually a performance, uh, 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 a mental skills trainer who's in, in grad school and you're getting, you know, probably half the prices if you would work with a, 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 a professional sports psychologist who has 10, 15 years under their belt. So it, it's a more economical way to do it. And then we do uh, resilience boot camps with teams where we, work with them in their practice, looking for the teachable moments in their framework and how they do things, but also take them out for team building mental health and mental skills. We're really excited about these drop-in plays and that, that's, that's, that's gonna start this week. We, for instance, we've worked in 10 schools in Del Mar that, during the enrichment space. And then we filter these kids into an after school. Uh, we stationed our instructors at local parks and uh, the, the goal is to, to create a play experience with the kids that, that integrates breathing, uh, other mental skills like imagery, visualization, self-talk, but it's rooted in fun. And I've uh, put our, our curriculum up here. We're not one of these people who are huddling over curriculum. Oh, we don't want to, we want the world to see this. And we want, we want to, we believe that we're we're dialing in what the right dosage of each of these, right? But I'm just gonna go through how a practice works. 12 kids, 15 kids show up to the park on, uh, on Thursday, what, what it's gonna look like um, for, 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 for just so you can uh, imagine what, what a session looks like. Before we huddle the kids up, we start with an intentional engagement with just uh, moderate stressors where the kids feel that they're in control of amping up the, uh, the stakes of the game. Um, we might say, okay, have two lines of five kids facing each other. We're gonna to try to move these three balls up and down the line, passing back and forth, going up the ladder and back down. If the ball hits the ground, we start again. The kid yells, whoever yells fire, we add an extra ball in. Let's see if we can get two balls. And then, you know, we work up, then, you know, ultimately they try to get four balls in there. This is just a, a way for kids to sort of talk to each other, warm up, come into the session. I used to, you know, kind of blow past warm ups when I was, a, I didn't understand how important it was for the brain to warm up. And so that's what the intentional engagement is. We then huddle the kids up. Um, we, we, we frame our practices, our sessions around stories that we tell them about resilience. Let me see if I can bring one of these up. Uh, I don't have it right here, but um, if I told you these stories in a restaurant, they would capture your attention. These We've mined popular culture, looked at movie scripts that should have been made, stories that would blow your mind. And we've got like 30 of them. We're going to have 300 of them eventually. And, and, and these stories are all true. And the protagonist had to use a breath at a critical moment. Um, uh, an example would be Henry Box Brown was a, a slave in, in, in Richmond, Virginia who uh, dreamed of escaping to freedom. He concocted this plan where he was gonna, he, see, he studied the local post office and watched how packages moved in and out. He mailed himself with the help of a, a, a white man named Sam Smith. He mailed himself from, from uh, uh, Richmond to Philadelphia. 12 hours on that trip, that, that box was turned upside down on a boat going across the Chesapeake. If he would have made a sound, he would have been killed. We tell the kids that Henry Box Brown used the box breath to survive. Breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, uh, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds. Now, when we play games today, we're gonna use that breath during critical moments. And you know, Henry got to uh, Philadelphia, got to a safe place. When they opened the box, you know, the first thing he said was, it's great to be here. Anyway, um, so, the the it's just a little joke but um the we 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 then play finite games and infinite games a finite game i'm sure you maybe some of you have read the book it's a famous book finally infinite games so we didn't make this up most of what we have in life is you know 
stolen or, or borrowed, but we always give credit to where credit is due. A finite game is a game with rules where the kids know. Basketball, football, soccer are all played in a box, as is four square. So we're going to play box type games today because the story serves as the spine for the practice. And during the, the game play is an escalate to de-escalate framework. We use the, the, the penalty shots, the stops and the whistle. Anytime where there's a, a chance to reset in the throw of the game, you have to be very careful with this. If you keep blowing the whistle and say, everyone do a box, but the kids will be like, stop. I just want to play. So you've got to realize where these kids are. You can't bully them into order. But if a kid uses a breath during a critical moment, again, this is science that goes back a thousand years. He's going to at least giving him the best opportunity to make a good play. It, 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 it's just simply allowing them to access their prefrontal cortex to get the, we tell them it's like taking a giant lawnmower to the top of their brain. And, and it really only takes this. It's just connecting your thought to your breath. We tell them. Um, and if you have, you know, if you miss a shot, think about your breath. Don't let the negative thought cycle go. And what you find is that you're more in tune, your athletic animal in that moment, because you're not letting your, your thoughts dictate your actions. You're just focused on what you know how to do, which is play these games, which are, you know, and supremely fun. If they make a mistake, that's an opportunity to practice breathing. Um, so the, the, this finite game, it, 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 it's, 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 it's really just, a, a, it's the games that we all love to play. And it's just, we just make, make use of the resets and transitions. We then do, do infinite games. Infinite games are, are games the kids make up with rules designed to keep the fun going. If, if we give the kids a volleyball, a tennis racket and a jump rope and say, you have to come up with their own game. According to Peter Gray, who's a play expert, it, 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 if we have 20 minutes to play, but they only they spend 15 minutes hogging over the rules and they only have five minutes to play, that's still a very good use of time because of the agency and autonomy these kids experience figuring this out on their own. And then, um, you know, we, we continue to use the breathing techniques, the box breath or whatever the breath of the day is in that game. And this is really where the magic happens. Because in an infinite game, the kids transition in their mind to an imaginative state of mind. And if we meet them out there and we can get them doing the breaths while they're lost in play, that, then we believe it has a better chance of sticking and making a habit. And, and at the end of the day, that's the only reason we're here is to try to create a habit that they do in real life. Um, yes, this is going to be very useful for performance and try to think about moments that, that we use this breath in the game that could mimic a, you know, before the batter's box. Well, that's what you could do before a test. So there's a lot of lingo that carries over to real life. And we try to name that process for the kids, repeat that process and, until that becomes instinctive in the face of stress. It's not, does not happen. It's not magic. It, it's the connection with each other. It's the connection with the instructor and it, 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 it's feel, they have to feel better as a result. So they feel it, it can work. If it does not work for us saying, hey, you just do this, you'll get into Harvard, you check off this box, you gotta, it's, that's not how the kids think. It's if they experience success as a result of breathing and they feel themselves feel better, then we have a chance here. And we're, we're making strides with Catherine, we'll get into. And then we end each practice with a meditation. And this meditation is not religious. It's not spiritual. It's centered around the awareness of breath. Some days we say, hey, let's listen to this song. Some days we say, hey, let's just think about nothing for two minutes. Ultimately, we find that the kids really like this. It's like a video game they go into in their brain. And it, um, it, it just, it, it, it's been really, this has been the best part of our practices, it's just watching the kids like fall in love with meditation. So um, that, this is our IP and um, we're, we're building it out right now and we'd love to talk. We love talking about this. So if any of you have any ideas or ways to improve this, it, we, we are not huddling over this. We are trying to, you know, figure out how to refine it and grow and strengthen it. Um, I don't know why I won't. Let me just try to go to the slide. Um, I have a, um, oh, there we go. All right. So Catherine has been, um, we're, 
incredibly lucky to have her involved. She's a brilliant person, but she's taken over, a, you know, it doesn't matter what you say, it matters what you prove. And so Catherine, I'll, 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 I'll pass this over to you of what you've seen and what you've experienced in this program. It'd be great to share yeah. with them. Brilliant, thank you, Sean. So um, yes, exactly. Um, it's an amazing idea and it's a really brilliant idea, but if we don't have any evidence of effectiveness, then um, it's just an idea, it's not a product, but we are seeing a lot of evidence of effectiveness. So um, for, um, the last year or so, I've been collecting um, evidence through surveys uh, to children and parents, and more recently also school staff, school counselors, um, some kids that we've also interviewed to get more in-depth feedback. And um, the um, in terms of, um, here's an example um, from a recent assessment, um, of um, 21 parents who answered surveys, um, the vast majority actually said that they'd seen their child practicing breathing techniques at home outside of um, IA sessions. And again, the vast majority said that um, at least some of the time, their kid was actually using these techniques when angry or upset. So um, in terms of um, uh, little um, vignettes of um, uh, testimonials from parents, we've got um, at least two dozen or more really impressive accounts of parents um, describing situations where their, um, their child was getting upset, for example, um, uh, being asked to clean their room and they've actually gone off and sat down and spent some time breathing and then they, um, came back and were willing to, um, to tidy the room or do whatever was necessary. So um, I think that's really impressive. Um, here we've got um, the parent of a um, kindergarten kinder student, so a very young child of a program that's just finished in Del Mar, it was um, in Richmond. So, um, and it, she, her comment was that um, the ability to self-regulate is noticeable and that she, the child even tells her mom to breathe. So, um, some really impressive results in terms of that. We were also seeing changes um, in pre and post survey answers um, from kids as well. Um, so, um, in, in general, I've been looking at, um, the survey scores and kind of using that as a very rough measure of resilience with obviously positive findings, but the scores are increasing as kids are acquiring these skills. Um, the slide is about, um, the account we've been collecting stories from, from kids about using when they've found they breathing useful in real life situations. So, um, around 50 um, accounts so far um, includes uh, situations like unfamiliar class with unfamiliar people around um, unruly behavior to control emotions, um, taking tests at school um, to avoid fighting with siblings, um, to help them sleep um, before a COVID shot um, in front of when needing to speak in front of others, um, things like that. So, um, um, and as well as the um, breathing techniques, as I mentioned before, we're also um, using positive self-talk and some other skills and um, some uh, very impressive results from the uh, from a sports psychology elective where I went in and interviewed some of the children, um, middle school kids of um, their um, their impressions of the program and um, all of the students were using um, at least one skill or more, usually more in um, both sport and in real life. Um, and they were all pretty passionate about how much difference these had made to them. Um, several yeah. students shared, um, yeah, how they were able to control worry in the, in the moment in, for example, social situations when they hadn't been in the past using these, these skills. Kat, I was just going to say, sorry to interrupt that, that I just uh, put the impact report that you just recently published in the chat. So if they want to follow up and read any of those uh, vignettes that you're talking about. And, and I, I think it's also important to, when we work with middle school and high school students, we, we integrate a lot more uh, mental skills and sports psychology skills than at, with an elementary school student. With elementary schools, it's, it's generally sport play and breath work. Whereas the middle school students and high school students, they, they want to gain advantages in their pursuits, both athletically and uh, you know musically, and and so uh, 
we frame this, this, the sessions around teaching these skills like visualization, imagery, focus, self-talk, and then we have them teach it back to the class to, to signify mastery. And, um, and, and so th that's all uh, in, in the uh, impact report that, um, that Catherine uh, produced. So I encourage you all to read it and please share it with anyone you think would be interested. Um, and then this leads us to where we're going. Catherine? Yeah, so um, we're planning to do a randomized control trial because obviously that's the most, um, uh, that's the gold standard in terms of proving that something works. So, um, so far we've got um, preliminary observational evidence and that's um, obviously open to some bias, although um, the more um, evidence we build up, the more um, convincing it is. But yet yeah, we obviously want to do an RCT um, in, and randomize kids to um, our intervention and probably a waiting list um, control with kind of usual, either usual, um, programming that they have in school, if this is a school-based uh, RCT, or um, another um, area that would be interesting is to have um, kids refer to us who maybe have mild anxiety and need these coping skills. And then um, we would obviously probably switch over and have the, the kids waiting on the waiting list do our program as well. So um, we're, uh, I'm in the middle of uh, writing a protocol for that. Um, and um, we're looking for source of funding. Um, we uh, we know that we can get ethical approval outside of the university, but it would be nice to do this together with the university as well. Um, and a lot of uh, obviously, um, it, it should be it should be something that's uh, pretty achievable in the next six months um, in terms of having a small RCT. And obviously, in a very long term vision, it would be something more like this, where it's. Um, looking at the effects on the school and school climate and um, how it affects uh, long-term behavior and um, success as well in school. And, and for all, all of you practitioners on here, you know, it probably makes logical sense to, to want to know for sure if this, you know, this works from an RCT, but from a business strategy point of view, the RCT is our tactic. So, it is very, very challenging to market to schools. If, if you don't have something like evidence from an RCT, if you don't have evidence-based um, like strategies or uh, you know, a program that has you know, clear evidence, no one's gonna talk to you. you know, the, the, going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, going to Tennessee, going to Jacksonville, Florida, you're gonna wait in line with every single vendor trying to break into the social emotional learning space. So our, our, our strategy is let's build the evidence, let's get the, the, the let, let's get that evidence based stamp and then go to market. And so we're, we're, we're sort of putting all our eggs in that basket, vice standing in line because I, I'm just telling you it is, is very, I don't know if any of you ever tried to sell to schools, but it's a, it's a very wonky business cycle and it's um, just it, 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 it's even though you know COVID has decimated the, the sort of the, the, the backbone of a lot of these schools mental health and it's just it, 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 it's, it's remarkably slow moving if you just go one school at a time so the goal here would be to get the RCT and at the same time become the this 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 platform that that att attracts mind body professionals such as athletes uh uh, uh, coaches who are, are mind body professionals and and and, and uh, grad students who are uh, you know from psychology education connect them to jobs and, and, and create that network of paraprofessionals. I say uh, Kristen Priol raised raised her hand and this should function more as a conversation. So um, please uh, uh, welcome. We we'd love to hear your question. Is she, can she be unmuted? Uh, let me see. She is. I am. I I allowed her to unmute. Thanks, Tammy. She just needs to unmute herself. <laughs> Mm 
You're still muted. Yeah, about well, excuse me, I'm uh, um, still at, at a noisy place, but uh, yeah, um, sounds very interesting. And uh, am I the only participant or? No, there's about 20 people on. Okay. Um, Do you have a question? No, oh, no. I, okay, but, all right. We'll keep going then. Okay. Okay, um, start with that. So, um, back to what, what we're seeing the growth of this is that we we believe that 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 we can become a an attractive side hustle to um, mental health professionals who are, are you know paraprofessionals, coaches, athletes, uh, teachers, counselors um, who maybe don't have you know the 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 clinician uh, grade, but they can teach these skills, and um, we pay roughly. Uh, 60 to hundred dollars per session. So it's, it's, it's almost the equivalent of teaching a yoga class. Um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, paying 25 bucks for, for, and, and again, burning through college kids or getting, you know, um, just people who are just looking to change time for a paycheck. It's, we want someone who, who believes in this and we, we don't actually train them in the sense that we don't train them with like, Hey, you need to do this and say this. It's the sessions are a bend, but don't break protocols. We, we, we give them the stories. We give them the games that work with each story. But you know the practice is run by their energy and their connection. And so um, we we've had a, a pretty solid, stable uh, bench of, of instructors. And we have our, our goal is to become you know the the you know the the job of choice for uh, practicum speaking seeking psychology students. Um, from from several different disciplines. And so we're trying to create alliances with local universities. We have a partnership with Alliant right now, National University. Um, and, and then, you know, we want to get the word out amongst people who um, who, 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 who believe that, that, that in, the, in, the, in the body mind connection and that there's different ways to um, to help kids that are, you know, aside from from, you know, seeking clinician, um, and, and we know how busy the clinicians are right now. And some uh, students, you know, some kids don't rise to the point of having an actual diagnosis. Well, refer them to us, uh, you know, our drop-in plays. We, we're, we're starting off in Del Mar, but we're gonna be popping up at local parks all throughout the county. And, and we believe that we have, a, like I said, an accessible, acceptable, free of stigma model that can teach kids foundational skill sets that, get, that can maybe, you know, prevent them from from going down the rabbit hole later in life because they learn these skills early on so um your attention has been a gift uh we, we we would love to continue to answer questions from you but this concludes our, our presentation uh, again um Catherine uh included a google drive um it's in the link if you feel uh moved to 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 join our 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 company in any way, whether it be uh, we have Monday evening, we have a round table with all of our instructors at eight o'clock tonight. It's not going to go on, but we just talk about the issues that are important to us each week. And um, that, that's been really uh, you know a great way to build community. So we're, we're just getting started. We're in that crawl walk phase. Um, and we, we believe that we're building something that's going to be around a long time. So it, it's very uh, uh, important that we get the right people on board. And so thank you for your attention. We're happy to answer any questions unless Captain, you have anything else? Oh, yeah, it's just um, if you switch to the next slide, Sean, there's also a QR code that I put in so you can scan it with your phone and quickly um, obviously show um, areas of interest in our business if, if it's still if it's there. I don't think it's on this one. Oh, so. not on this one. Okay. okay. Well, it's in the link as well. Yeah. So okay, um, great. We'd love to get your email address so we can send you more information. Okay, great, Catherine, Sean, thank you so much. It sounds like you're really doing some, some awesome work that, um, that I think will be of interest to, um, to our members here at San Diego Psychological Association. Um, and then I did see a couple questions. Um, Dr. Wagner, do you want to go ahead and take Take it away. 
Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so the first question from Robin Harwood, can this model be scaled for a one-time session? Maybe it wouldn't involve all the components, but it could introduce the basics. I'm thinking school assemblies might be a great foot in the door. Yeah, we absolutely can do. We're, 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 so we're working with this one private school in, um, in, in Encinitas where the, the contract is to deliver this through the PE classes, partner with a PE teacher and make sure every kid gets a taste of it. Um, so we'll, we'll run one class for each, each group, we'll, but, but you know, the assemblies as well. Um, but but re, re, you can't pep talk resilience. It needs to be experienced. And so we wanna take kids to push them past their proverbial edge and then allow them to use the breath to calm themselves down in the moment that's how this works. It's, it's, it's not something that we just, you know, sit on a soapbox and, and, and you know, and tell them to like, you know, to, to breathe in. They've got to feel the st real stress. So all of our trainings, if it's train the trainer model to it, they're all experiential. Um, that, that's just one of the, uh, you know, foundations of our business that we're creating. Okay, um, I think as of right now, that's the only question. The other comment in the Q&A box um, was just more of a comment than an email, um, than a question, but we did have somebody raise their hand, Madison Day Robinson. Um, maybe if she had a question that she wanted to ask. Hi, yes, sorry, I would, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. Oh, great. Um, I was trying to chat, type in the question, but I realized this might be faster. Um, so first off, thank you for your presentation. Um, I really love like the company that you're building. I think it's an amazing um, opportunity for our youth. Um, I do have a question about, you mentioned in the beginning using this model for sports teams, like actual um, like clubs. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I wonder how this model looks like um, incorporating it into the club, like for practices, like, would you do the same kind of model of like the engagement and then the play or how, what would that look like? So we are piloting this in different ways right now. I will give you my gut reaction to how the best way we can, in, you know, integrate into a team. I would say that, 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 that the, they, they would sign up for, let's say six sessions Three of those sessions would be on site, shadowing the coach, looking for teachable moments within their practice framework to practice breathing, um, you know, looking for the resets, maybe suggesting that, you know, giving them different ways to, to, to scaffold back down before they transition from drill to drill, rather than, you know, most drill, most coaches typically at the height of the drill, they'll blow the whistle when the kids have mastered the drill but we want to give them space to scaffold back down. So it's like crawl, walk, run, walk, then transition. So we would try to figure out ways that they could, you know, practice breathing in the framework. And then we would love to take, you know, three sessions off site, do our survival skills hike, do our cold water immersion, do our night hike or um, Nerf gun battles in the woods that we do. It's, it's team building mental health and mental skills because these ways, these kids get to practice this in real time, you know, you know, under real stress and duration, and it just brings them closer together as well. That's how we're seeing it right now. There, there, there probably is a better way to integrate in the teams, and we really want to be a part of the, 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 the youth sport framework, and we think we have a lot to add, but it's, it, you know, it's finding the, the, just being totally honest with you, Madison, a lot of these parents feel nickel and dime by these clubs. And so this would be one more fee that would be added upon. And so we've really got to figure out how, you know, how, what are we kicking back to the club as a result, you know, from the business aspect and, and, you know, how, how's this, how's this deliver? If it's the head of the club, the Academy is then the coach on board. Um, and, you know, a lot of parents, the reason why they sign their kid up for sports in the beginning is so they can get these mental skills but again, there's just one more thing to pay for. And, you know, it's just with this travel clubs, it's just, it adds up pretty quick. So 
we're trying to figure out the best way to integrate. Um, like I said, we're doing some one-on-ones, some small groups with kids. Uh, and, and those are usually with the teams and the one-on-ones, we're using a, 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 a sport performance grad student. Um, you know, a lot of our instructors are, are lay people such as myself who don't really have a lot of schooling in this, but just believe in sort of the mindfulness aspect and they love the idea. They, we practice, you know, we have our own mindfulness practice. But we also have a, a pretty good group of, of psychologists in training, and that's who we sent to the team. Thank you. I appreciate your response. Um, I think, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, it's hard for parents out there. I know clubs can be really expensive, um, but I love like incorporating like the breath work. And I even thought about like trying to show parents, like, I just feel like there's so many like outcome measures out there, like research that shows like how powerful breathing can be. That's kind of already been done. And so even showing them those, like, I don't know, that research that's been done or from the randomized control trial that uh, y'all are doing would just be really powerful. Yeah. And you mentioned the parents. I mean, the one thing I, 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 and this research that just stuck out to me is that a dysregulated adult cannot regulate a dysregulated kid. And, you know, are the parents' stress becomes the kids' stress. And, you know, is there any way to impact the, the, the parents, especially with youth sport, um, you know, it, their behavior and their energy is what really, you know, I, I think it's been a huge driver in kids' anxiety. So we, we don't know the solution to that, but, but you know, if this is going to be effective, it's got to, you know, we've got to somehow bring the, the breathing techniques into the family structure some way, somehow. And again, I didn't know this stuff and my life's been totally changed. It's just learning how to take a, a breath in the face of stress that I feel coming on. So we do believe we have a lot to offer and, and we have some partnerships that are brewing right now. They're not, you know, manifested yet, but with the YMCA and with a gaming company. So there's a lot of interesting ways we can integrate into uh you know to to reach kids and we're 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 just really trying to to, to build this carefully and and, and 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 do this thing the right way and could i just add as well for um this question um madison thank you um one of the things we'd like to do is partner with a biofeedback company so kind of um a monitoring device um to show in real time um, the ability of the kids to bring down their pulse through breathing, but also HRV, high heart rate variability is a marker of anxiety. So perhaps we could also hopefully show that over time there might be low, you know, reduction in levels of anxiety through the use of this marker. Um, and secondly, actually, um, some parents have been leaving us feedback, so asking for the techniques to be made available to them as well so they can practice with the kids at home and we are we're working on ways to um to integrate these different aspects um it's still in development but um what we can offer to parents as well um okay it looks like we have two more questions um jonathan asked are there any opportunities for psychology undergraduate students you're our bread and butter that's who we hire so please have any undergraduate uh, student get in touch we offer coaching jobs at local schools we try to get them you know as close to that person's living quarters or areas of work as possible, um, because at the end of the day, if someone has to drive an hour, it's not going to work. So yes, that, that's who we hire is, 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 is practicum speaking grad students, seeking grad students. So absolutely, please follow up. Um, my email is sean at intellectualathlete.co. Um, it would probably be in the, uh, in the chat as well. I'll put it in right now. Yes, and the feedback form also has a space to write any comments, and then you can leave your email address, and I'll, I'll be following up. Okay, um, and one last question um, from Oliver Spink. Would you have any interest in implementing your work or research in the UK too? I am a UK-based sports psychologist visiting San Diego, and I am interested to hear more. Oh, well, from my point of view, absolutely. Um, yes, um, something that I've thought about quite a bit, and I definitely hope this comes to the UK. Um, and obviously, I have quite a few connections there. So um, 
I think that um, the NHS very much needs um, something like this um, because the waiting times to see um, a counselor or a therapist, they're pretty long. Um, when I was there, they're about 16 weeks. So um, something like this while you're waiting to see a therapist um, to um, would be, I think, very valuable. So um, absolutely. And if, um, yeah, I'd love to follow up with you on this as well. Yeah, Oliver, likewise. Um, my former company, P Peace Players, works in Belfast right now year round. Um, we we, we want to go everywhere. And it's not hard, you know, most uh, sensible business people would say, put this in a box here and grow, but we're, we're hiring uh, instructors. That we, it's very easy to find mind-body professionals. This job is attractive to a lot of different silos of, 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 of athletes, coaches, um, counselors. So like I said, we're, we're, we've just started piloting in Washington, D.C., um, and we're looking to pilot other places as well. So if you wanted to grab a coffee while in town, please uh, shoot us an email. Um, but we're definitely excited that you took your time uh, on your trip here to, to to listen to this because, and we know how big mental health is in, in UK, how, how it's a national effort. And so, um, yeah, we we we, we want to grow everywhere. We just uh, looking for leads and, and and ways to do so. All right. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. Um, oh, and yeah, Kimberly, did you want to um, want to say something? No, I was just going to say I don't see any more questions at this time. Um, so go ahead, Michael. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, again for attending. We um, it's definitely intellectual athlete is a definitely a promising company that's giving. That I, I, there's a lot of potential to help people get into the field of sports psychology and sports psychology consulting in in a less um in a way that requires that has less barriers typically there are uh, graduate programs and practicum and you can really only start to get involved kind of at the graduate level and the postgraduate level so um this is really promising um work that you're doing and we definitely look forward to um, staying connected and, and following what you're doing. Um, so again, uh, if there was a little, if we were in person, this would be the time where uh, Sean and Sean and Catherine would get a round of applause. So thank you both so much for being here. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Kimberly Wagner. Thank you as always for um, helping organize and um, you know, being a resource. Um, and I believe this is Tammy, Tammy Magaro's, at least the final webinar with us, the Sports Psycholo Psychology Committee. So I definitely wanted to um, extend a big thank you to Tammy. You've been just instrumental in helping us um, organize these webinars, get the word out. Um, so we really, we really appreciate everything that you've done. Um, and then, yes, you have, so there are some ways to get in touch with um, our presenters here of Intellectual Athlete. And if you have any questions um, for me or uh, or Dr. Wagner, please um, please don't hesitate to email me at michael.sale7 at gmail.com. Um, I'll throw that in there. So if you're interested in uh, joining the Sports Psychology Committee, if you have ideas for other webinars, maybe if you have a, um, a connection in the community who you think um, other members would be interested in in hearing from, please it'd be we welcome all recommendations um, and any ways that you want to connect. So and thank you so much. Hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. Your attention's a gift. Yeah.